there's this idea in psychology called hedonic adaptation, okay? Where basically it states that no matter what positive or negative stimulus exists in your life, okay? No matter what good thing or bad thing happens to you inside your life, your baseline level of happiness, okay? Your level of happiness returns to a normal level given a certain amount of time. So it doesn't matter if you just won the lottery, okay? In that case, your level of happiness would go up temporarily, but then it would eventually go down back to where it was. Or it doesn't matter if you got in a car crash and paralyzed a couple of limbs, okay? It doesn't matter if that happens either, because what happens as time goes on is you eventually return to your baseline level of happiness. Now, researchers actually observe this specifically when it comes to people who had had to get their legs amputated or basically were disabled after a certain event in their lives. So what would happen is it, it was most likely children that I saw this with, okay? So they went some sort of injury. They had some sort of injury because of which they weren't able to walk anymore. Now, for a certain period of time, they were extremely depressed, you know, as anybody would be after losing their legs. But then eventually they just started becoming happier and they felt like normal children again. They didn't feel weird about not having any legs and not being able to walk around. They just felt fine and their level of happiness returned to normal. Now, to take the other example, let's say you just ended up or somebody else just ended up winning the lottery, okay? They might just be extremely happy for a temporary period of time, but then what happens is as they start spending all that money, either one, they become accustomed to it, or two, they end up spending all of the money in such a stupid and foolish way that they end up losing it all, which means that they either go below their original level of happiness or they just return back to where they were. Now, how does this apply to you not being able to stop pricing? Well, if you think about it, it doesn't matter how many new amazing and beautiful setups that you create, right? It doesn't matter even if you can make setups with a gorgeous theme switcher like this, even if you can make Overwatch panels with such cool animations as these, even if you can turn Hyperland into a very desktop environment itself, it doesn't matter. Because you know why? Hedonic Adaptation says that no matter what positive or negative thing happens in our life, our level of happiness, right? It always just returns to a baseline. So it's better if I just show you this on a graph. So here, let me just create this as a graph. Okay, so we'll just call this time. We'll call this time here. Well, let's put that here. And then let's call this happiness. 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 Okay, so we'll put that here. Increase the size. Okay, great. Now, to show you how this works, we'll just have to take a pen and just draw it. Okay, so if you consider this to be a baseline level of happiness, this is zero happiness, this is 100, okay, on a scale of zero to 100. This would just be happiness points if you want to, okay? When it comes to time, you can just block these out or just block these as two-year time intervals, okay? Just to take a bit of an example, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Now, if we keep this as a 50 and then we draw a line that goes like this, okay? What actually happens is no matter what good event or bad event happens, you just return to a normal baseline, which is this point over here. So you take the average of this point and this point, what you're going to get is this. So this would be, for example, let's say winning the lottery, winning lottery. Put that here. Then this point would be something like being paralyzed. Being paralyzed. Ta-da. Now you can also take this and apply it to Hyperland setups as well. So this would be something like a bare minimum Hyperland setup where all you do is just change the wallpaper and then you get a couple of you know, apps here and there that make your experience on Hyperland, you know, just okay enough for you to keep using it, okay enough for it to be better than GNOME, but then not good enough to the point where, oh, you know what, this should actually be here. Yeah, this should be somewhere here. Okay, bare minimum, and this is amazing. So we'll just keep that here, yeah. So bare minimum is basically it being a little bit better than GNOME to the point where you're actually able to make it, yeah, even look a little bit like GNOME with the title bars and everything. If I just show you with different themes what the title bars look like, this is what that looks like. Okay, we pick a theme like Tokyo Night. This is what that looks like. And let's pick something like Noir. Ta-da! As you can see, this is what 
the different theme looks like basically okay that's the bare minimum where you have okay what i just showed you is not actually the bare minimum it's the amazing part that you see here but regardless you get what i'm trying to say right it doesn't matter whether you have this kind of setup or this kind of setup okay whatever effects that you see it having on your level of happiness they're just going to be temporary because you eventually return to a baseline which is 50. now the baseline is determined on your general outlook towards life if you're a fucking pessimist right you're just going to have a lower level of baseline happiness but if you're an optimist and you believe that things will turn out for the best in the future as well as in the present and things have already turned out well in the past your baseline level of happiness is just going to be much higher and pro tip honestly just quit being a pessimist if you are one okay a little bit of a side lesson for you there but actually really pro tip i used to be a pessimist way back in the day i thought it made me feel smarter but then turns out i was just an idiot for being pessimistic and being cynical about the world so don't do that instead what you want to do is you want to be trusting of the world to a certain degree because the world is a mirror okay the world reflects your relationship to it because because it is a mirror so if you hate the world the world will hate you back there's a lot more philosophical depth that I can get into, especially when it comes to mirrors and why you should be optimistic and not pessimistic, think positively and whatnot, but that should be for a separate video. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, it doesn't matter how good or bad your Hyperland setup looks, the reason you can't stop pricing is because you just, one, you're addicted to the high of getting a new Hyperland setup that looks as gorgeous and amazing as something like this over here. That's one thing. And thing number two is that it doesn't matter how many new setups that you create, right? It really doesn't matter because your brain just gets adapted to it and you end up needing an even bigger dose of a cooler looking setup in order to satisfy that urge. It's kind of like a drug addict. <laughs> you know, this would actually be a perfect example. Yeah. So it would basically be a drug addict addicted to something like heroin or cocaine. Okay. It does a little bit, doesn't feel the kick anymore. So it has to do more and more and more until basically the drug addict has gotten so used to the drug that any withdrawal symptoms would basically be the same as him driving a wooden stake through his own heart probably being even more painful than that now all of this to say i make it seem like a bad thing okay but it's in fact the exact opposite because trust me pricing even while it seems like it's just a never-ending what do you call it treadmill of just create new setups over and over because you like it and because you just can't stop because you can't stop optimizing that's actually a good thing you know why one because it's actually fun for you and no other sane person no other sane individual in this world would actually sit here okay would sit here and then customize every single part of their desktop from their control center to their logout menu to their lock screen to basically every single part of their setup if they didn't actually like it so you actually do like it which means that you're watching videos like these okay which means that you're on the right track you don't like you don't absolutely hate rising which is amazing right that's one thing and thing number two of why it's a good thing is because it helps your productivity just think about it okay let's think logically for a second let's think like we're professionals now if you spend eight to ten hours a day inside of your environment every single day okay every single day chances are you're going to be spending that for the rest of your life okay let's say 10 to 20 years as a conservative amount okay inside of your same linux desktop wouldn't it make sense to take not even a fraction of that but a micro tiny the tiniest little sliver of that time into optimizing it and making it look good so that you actually want to spend more time in there and guess what let's say you do take the time to make it look as beautiful as you can like you see here okay you do take the time to make it look as good as you can possibly make it guess what happens guess what happens after that you want to be able to work at your computer more because you just like it think about it this way let's say you wanted to decorate your room let's say you did decorate your room to the point where it's just perfect everything's the exact place that you want it to be it's ex it's minimal it's cozy it's comfy it's warm the temperature is perfect everything would you not want to spend more time in that room okay now what happens when you combine that room with more productive habits like reading and exercising and journaling and meditating and whatnot what do you think happens you're just going to be likely to do those activities more same thing goes for your work environment. If you make your work environment actually conducive to work, so if I show you what VS Codium looks like, okay? This is all the coding stuff. Let's show you Discord as one of the apps that you could use to talk to people who you're collaborating with, perhaps. Okay, this is what I have looked, I have configured it to look like over here. Now I can change the theme and watch what happens when I do change the theme. The theme changes for every single app at once, not to mention the title bars as well as you see over here. 
Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how to make something like this, I teach you exactly how to do it in the first link in the description. So if you want, you can just click that link and check it out. Okay, but yeah, it would definitely make sense for you to optimize your setup. The place where you basically spend eight to 10 hours of your day, every single day, for a huge chunk and portion of your life, try and make that a lot better so that you actually feel like doing more work there, which means that you get all the benefits of working more over there. Whether it be you getting paid more, you getting more satisfaction because you just complete more work or whatever else that you do your work for, right? So that is basically it. That is why you cannot stop rising and why it's actually a good thing. So don't listen to all these bozos telling you that fucking rising is, rising is a waste of time. No, no, don't listen. Don't listen to these guys who ask you to rise. They're just asking you to buy his paid program. Don't listen to them. First of all, rising is fun. Otherwise, you still wouldn't be watching my channel. That's the first thing. You wouldn't be watching content like this if you didn't like rising. And secondly, it makes your environment so much better, so much more pleasant to work in. Why would you not want to do that? Anybody who says otherwise, honestly, needs to get their brain checked. Right? And I say that sarcastically and rhetorically, of course, unless they actually do want to get their brain checked, in which case I would not mind. But anyway, yeah. That is exactly why you cannot stop rising and why it's a good thing. It's a fantastic thing and why you should keep rising until the end of your life because you have never truly created a setup that you're permanently happy with. Ah, if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, as I showed you, that applies the themes to Discord, VS Codium, Spotify, every single app that I showed you, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and I would love to help you out because I was exactly where you were, right? Four years ago, I started Rising Hyperland, or actually just Rising in general. It was three years ago when I started Rising Hyperland specifically, right? I've been with Hyperland since basically it was launched. I've been with it in its infancy stages. I've been with it when basically no app supported it. I have been with it through it all. And I know the inside and out of how exactly this Wayland Compositor works. So if you want to learn from somebody who's been doing it for quite some time, okay, and you just want to skip the trials and tribulations of just learning the entirety of the Wayland Compositor yourself by reading the wiki, by just reading and then not having to watch somebody, right? If you just want to basically have a guide, a tutor to tell you that, look, here's all these struggles and trials and tribulations I've been through. Here's how you can skip through all of them. And here's how you can do it better than I did. If you want that kind of experience, that is exactly what I've tailored for you in the first link in the program. That's the first link in the description. So if you want, you can check that out. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.